Front mic's gonna give you a very direct sound on that amp. By blending in the backside, you get this full picture. Everything seems to open up a lot more. It's a lot airier of a sound and creates just a, a really nice um, full picture of what that amplifier sounds like, and what the guitar sounds like, what the player sounds like. The Royer 101 was a really great mic for this because um, it's a figure eight pattern ribbon mic. Um, it's, it's got a really warm sound. And so I think it, it did a really good job at capturing the backside of the amp, the ambience of the amp, the room itself. Any amplifier that has an open back where you can place the mic and get a picture of the backside of that speaker is the type of amp you would want to use for this. The close mics on the front and the back are really, they're reacting with environment minimally compared to what the room mic is. The back side of that is capturing, yes, more of an ambient sound, but it is still the direct sound coming from the back side of the speaker. Whereas the room mic is really capturing how the amplifier is interacting with the room. Now I'm going to just kind of blend the mics in a couple different ways so you can kind of hear the variations of the, uh, the, the front mic, the back mic, and the room mic together. I think this could benefit pretty much any style of music. Once again, it becomes dependent upon the mix. It depends on the, the, the tonality of the sound that you want to capture. I, I wouldn't say that it is any particular genre or style that necessarily would benefit more from, I think, a rocky or blues thing, um, like, you know, Jimmy Page or something like that, you know, that was sort of their mic technique back um, in the, on those early Zeppelin records where they wanted bigger, roomier sounds and that sort of thing. I think it works great for jazz. I think it works um, great for, uh, you know, more of a modern rock thing too. <laughs> 